us. Um, we thank God for what we just did, um, the baptism by immersion. And just like Pastor Tunde said, we want to encourage as many as are yet to do that to please um, avail yourself of that wonderful opportunity. Uh, the significance of it is just like um, is an outward expression of that which they believe. And it's I believe that even as they were immersed in the water, uh, they were dead to their old ways, to their sinful ways. And just like uh, Matt spoke to us about relationship today, it's my belief that as the, we brought them up from the water, they've come to the realization that they are indeed in relationship with their earthly, I mean, God, uh, with God, and also it will be a renewer of their relationship and their work with the Almighty God, and also with fellow human beings in the mighty name of Jesus. So as many as are yet to do that, please do it. It's one of the ordinances that was um, left for us by Jesus. Jesus himself was baptized. You know, and you know what happened after his baptism. The Bible says heaven opened, and God himself had to acknowledge him. He put a stamp of authority on him. He put a stamp of appreciation on him. And he says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It's my prayer that even those uh, who have done so tonight, it will be a new beginning of great and wonderful things in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm moving right along. We move into the Holy Communion. That's the other ordinance that was led behind by our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says um, for the night he was betrayed in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23. Here Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Corinth and he says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I just want to encourage each and every one of us, even before we partake of the communion. I don't know whether you've been coming in the last 10 months of the year. You know, there is something with us as human beings. When we do something repeatedly, 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 there is high chances that we take it for granted. We just see it as a normal routine or a normal norm. But this is not a routine. I, I want you to take it with an understanding and with a realization that as I take this, that which the previous 10 has not done in my life, this one shall do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Do it with an understanding. We do it as an act of faith. That there is power in that which we're about to do. He says, do this in remembrance of me. What memory of Jesus Christ do you want to bring to, your, to yourself tonight? What memory of what he did when he was physically here on earth do you want to bring to your life? What part of what he did? He opened the eyes of the blind. The deaf restored their hearing. The one that could not talk were able to talk. The one that had infirmity for multiple years, God did it. I don't know how long your situation has been. There is beauty with God. He can deal with chronic situation and he can deal with acute situation. Long-standing issue can be dealt with tonight. If you come with the understanding that that which I'm about to do tonight, I will not go back home with it in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's my prayer that even as you partake of the communion tonight, by the time we are having the last one for this year next month, you will come with your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. I said you will come with your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. So speaking about that, I don't want you to take it just in a casual manner. Take it with a great understanding that it's a great meal which has to be taken also according to his rule. You know, there is always a rule. He says, do this. And he says, you know, he went on to say something interesting. He says, so whenever you eat the bread and drink of the wine, in verse 27 of the same scripture, in an unworthy manner, we'll be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Now you might want to ask, how is it that I can eat it in an unworthy manner? So which was something that was meant to be of good to you will not now be something contrary to, your, to, you, to you. It says, whoever does this in an unworthy manner, he's sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. One way by which you can do it in an unworthy manner is to take it with an act of unforgiveness. If you have unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred in your heart, you've got to let go. Knowing fully well that it's not worth holding your miracle down for. So that's a way by which you can take it in a worthy manner. 
If you have an active sin in your life, repent of your sin. Confess your sin and repent of it before you partake in this. Otherwise, it will just simply be an ordinary bread and ordinary wine to you. So it's very important. It says each and every one of us should examine ourselves. And the truth of the matter is that you can deceive people all of the time. You cannot deceive God. It's only if you want to fool yourself. So I want to give each and every one of us the opportunity to bow down our heads now. And let's meditate on where we are and where we're standing in our spiritual journey with God. Am I in the right standing with God? If I take this the way I am, will it be in an unworthy manner? So that which is supposed to be a blessing will not now be a cause. Examine yourself. If you have any active sin that you need to repent of, confess your sin. And just like we heard tonight, is a relational God. It says, confess your sin, and he will remember them no more. He will push them into the sea of forgetfulness. You have bitterness, you have hatred against somebody, let them go. Genuinely, forgive them and let them go. Father Lord, we thank you once again for another wonderful opportunity. It's a privilege to dine with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The ancient of days, the God who has been even from the, before the existence of the whole world. You are ancient, but still relevant in our days today. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful privilege. We are not worthy, but simply because of the blood of your son that was shed on the Calvary. For our sin, it has reconciled us and brought us back unto you. Lord, there is nothing we can pay you back for what the blood of Jesus has done for us. Lord, we thank you for reconciliation. Lord, we thank you for counting us worthy to be seated and to be dining with you tonight. What a great privilege. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We adore you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. At this point in time, the ministers will share the elements. So please just hold it. We all have it together at the same time.
says this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me you may eat of the bread even as it is and in verse 25 he goes on to say that in the same manner after supper he took the cup saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, you may drink of the wine also at this time. Then we give us some few minutes to speak unto the Lord. Turn that hymn into a prayer point. Fill my cup, Lord. What is your need? What is there to your heart? Speak unto the Almighty God tonight. Says, cry unto me on the day of trouble, and I will answer you. Speak unto me. There is no situation that he can never attend to. There is nothing that is too much or too big for our God to do. There is nothing that is complicated for him to do. He's a God that can create something out of nothing. He created the whole universe by speaking. What will you have him to speak unto him tonight? With a confidence assurance that he's more than able to meet you at the very point of your need. He's able to save unto the uttermost. What seems to be impossible is possible with our God. What seems to be complicated with man is nothing before our God. Irrespective of the longevity of your needs, he can meet you at the very point of your needs. can negate the report of the physician. That's why he's called the greatest physician of all times. Whatever report the doctors have given unto you, God can rewrite it. Bring it before him tonight. Ask in faith. With absolute realization that that which you are bringing before him tonight, there shall be performance of in the mighty name of Jesus. He is able. He's able. He's more than able. 
ask him to fill your cup tonight. Ask in faith. to bring our prayers to a close. Begin to thank him in advance for that which you've asked of him tonight. Thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him. Give him thanksgiving. Father Lord, we thank you once again for this great opportunity in your presence. Lord, we thank you for every petition that has been brought before you tonight. Lord, we thank you because we know you are able. You said in your word, you've not asked the house of Jacob to call you in vain. Lord, as we have asked of you, Lord, we wait patiently for the physical manifestation. And Lord, we shall be careful to come and return the glory and honor unto you. We thank you, Lord, for we know it is done. We give you all the glory, all the honor and all the adoration. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, I believe we we have the certificate for those that got baptized. We do that, and then we'll have the Titan offering. We have the uh, recessional hymn.